golden globs of sunshine, sparkling water, a picture postcard perfect day on the Gulf. But you know it's not always like this. Every once in a while, a hurricane comes along and turns things upside down. Hurricane Ivan was one of those storms 10 years ago, September 16th, 2004. Ivan was a long track major hurricane that crossed the Atlantic at low latitude and became a category five in the Caribbean. It hit Jamaica and the Cayman Islands hard. As Ivan approached us, it weakened a little to a category four, but still produced waves in the Gulf of Mexico of over 50 feet. It arrived as a high category three overnight with storm surge of 10 to 15 feet and it produced over 100 tornadoes across the southeast. In the News 5 area, nearly a dozen people were killed. The United States death toll was 25 people added to the dozens and dozens killed in the Caribbean. Ivan changed the landscape. Before Ivan in Orange Beach, after Ivan. Before Ivan. After Ivan. These two units combined were appraised at the time at over $7 million. That's part of the reason Ivan was an expensive storm. It was one of the most costly hurricanes to strike the United States with over $14 billion in losses measured. The dollar cost was just one way to measure Ivan. The social and psychological cost and impact was huge. For the Pensacola area, Ivan was the most intense hurricane in a century. Ivan made many homeless. It exposed weaknesses in construction. The impact was not just at the coast, it stretched well inland where wind and tornadoes tore apart communities. Ivan took out more than a half a billion dollars worth of timber in Alabama. In this program, we'll look back at Hurricane Ivan's approach and landfall on the Gulf Coast. In a chronological sequence, we'll relive the anticipation, the preparation, the evacuation, and the devastation. All of that was a part of Hurricane Ivan's impact on the Gulf Coast. Summertime is beach season for many of us, a good place to be on a quiet day. But for those of us who remember Ivan, George, Danny, Opal, Aaron, Frederick, we're always watching the Gulf of Mexico, knowing that it could change at any moment. 10 years ago, it did change. Monday, September 13th, three days before Ivan, all is calm. Tuesday, Two days before Ivan, hurricane watch. Get plywood and get out. I'm not taking any chances. I'm gonna go ahead and go out. We've been going all over Fairhope and there's no wood left at all. There's none. So we came out here to Gulf Shores to get it. And they have a 10 uh, piece minimum down there too. And the lines are about two blocks long. Ivan's arrival as a hurricane looks more certain See, it is a dangerous storm, and they need to move to other places tomorrow. We are right in the center of the watch area, and it's likely that this will be turned into a hurricane warning later today. But ultimately, this is going to come down to neighbor helping neighbor. City workers are protecting Government Plaza with sandbags. All employees who work in the building are being evacuated as of noon today. We issued a mandatory evacuation today for Fort Morgan, for Gulf Shores, Orange Beach. We now have a hurricane warning issued. I hope no one in this viewing area takes it lightly. The hurricane warning means we are going to see hurricane force winds within 24 hours. This has been going on since 7 o'clock in the morning. Lots of people from Okaloosa County, Florida, Escambia County, Florida, Baldwin County. That's why it's important to get out now. Mm -hmm. I like what you said. When in doubt, get out. Yes. A day and a half before landfall, News 5 continues to broadcast safety and evacuation information. Wednesday, September 15th, the day before landfall. There's no doubt Ivan is coming. 
So far, three separate twisters were spun by the hurricane in the Panama City area. Roofs are damaged, trees, power lines down, major damage to homes in many neighborhoods, that on top of the loss of lives as a result of this storm. It's going to be one of the roughest ones, I think. Set up house right here. Jason LaSure and his family are among the more than 1,200 people trying to find a small spot in the packed halls of Baker High. Uh, in Moss Point, mm -hmm. uh, we're recommending everybody south of uh, US 90 to evacuate. And, uh, this is the unprecedented moment of uh, this uh, hurricane uh, disaster preparedness. Uh, we're looking at pictures now of uh, traffic as it flows uh, out of the northbound lane into the southbound lane headed north. They're crashing all the way up to the, um, the buildings here and we're already seeing some debris, some stuff that just shouldn't have been left on the beach that was and, and now it's floating away to wherever. They are shutting down Beach Road. No one will be allowed in or out of Orange Beach. So we're asking all residents to be prepared to stay on their, on their own for at least the first 72 hours, if not 10 days. If they're going to leave town, they need to do it quickly. People are very, very aware of the power of this storm. The Bayou La Battery officials have closed all the roads into and uh, out of the city. The white caps are starting to appear a little bit more out here near the causeway. There are a few shelters that are full. Baker is full. They had a capacity of 2,000. Theodore High School is also full. Up to 15 inches of rainfall and wind speed of over 135 miles an hour. We've been telling you all day, please evacuate. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, you do not have time to evacuate. Where it's not safe to be on the road, and we have to also consider the safety of our emergency personnel. The clouds are moving very fast. That's something new that we've seen just in the last hour out here. A curfew countywide has been issued by the Baldwin County Sheriff's Office from dusk until dawn. So parts of 59 are already flooding. Some of the turn lanes are already underwater. For those that were here in 79 with Frederick, this is, this is every bit of a Frederick and probably worse than a Frederick. The storm surge can come up as much as 16 feet above normal. Right now, without power, 7,500 customers in the south end of the county. One bit of good news, though, uh, power crews from Michigan, Missouri, Pennsylvania, are coming into the area right now to help. But most of the people have strategically parked their cars here that are staying overnight and riding the storm out here at WKRG studio. And this camera is sitting right on top of the Riverview Hotel in downtown Mobile. 36,000 people in Baldwin County without electricity, numerous trees down, traffic lights down. Uh, it's beginning to have a major effect on Baldwin County right now. Please stay in until you receive an all clear from the Emergency Management Association gusting right now to 90 miles an hour. Uh, one of our photographers uh, decided he'd drive down to uh, the downtown area to see how far he could get and uh, got pretty close to Water Street, didn't get to Water Street though and couldn't tell us uh, if water was building up on Water Street like we saw a couple of storms before. The weather conditions have now deteriorated to the point that all emergency responses has, have ceased. The storm has not moved on shore yet. This is just the beginning. We know this is the tough time of the storm, and we're going to make it. We're going to get through this thing, and I know it's a scary time. This can be a 911. Yes, sir. We have a gentleman in our garage who um, has come and said his whole house has collapsed, and I think his family is dead. He is crying hysterically. We don't know who the man is. Um, but that's what he has told us. Ivan arrives. When we return, we pick up from the landfall of Hurricane Ivan on September 16, 2004. feet of storm surge right there. Yep. Hurricane Ivan makes landfall on the Gulf Coast after midnight on Thursday, September 16, 2004. 
driving rain, and of course winds that are easily going to be over 100 miles an hour. Winds over 100 miles an hour. And the roof came off the pavilion a while ago at the, when that gust hit at 101. It's going to be a bad situation. The eye is just moving on shore. The rain is like literally coming down sideways. All of our neighbors evacuated, and we were going to this morning, and then they, everyone said to stay where you are. So we stayed here. Ma'am, the, uh, the fire department has not responded to emergencies yes, due to the I severity of the weather. I don't give advice on what to do. You almost can't see right in front of the car there, and there's things flying by. That some of the sides of the buildings are starting to come off. He's been under the winds for about four hours. He's estimating winds over 100 miles an hour in Atmore. Two sheriff's deputies' cars that were hit by trees and total. It's 3.13 here on this Thursday morning, September the 16th. Hurricane Ivan is here. Some garage doors have been blown off. A lot of trees are down. 188 on Dolphin Island Parkway. There are several hundred logs in the roadway, as well as a roof is damaged at the Chickasaw City Hall complex. Daylight reveals damage and destruction from minor to major. Here downtown, things like downed trees. Uh, we even found one uprooted tree. Some of the signs knocked down. Five rooms uh, had the windows blown out. You see some evacuees there, people that were on the windward side of the Hampton Inn having to leave their rooms in a hurry. I don't know what we're going to do. We don't have no place to go. Fallen trees on business roofs as well as a number of homes and cars. There is a complete power outage in the city. Uh, President Bush today signed our disaster declaration. The I-10 east of Pensacola uh, crossing uh, into Santa Rosa County had damage. The morning after Ivan, more than 600,000 people have no power from Mississippi to northwest Florida. The record storm surge around Pensacola recedes. Overlooking uh, the Three Mile Bridge in the distance, uh, this is a marina we were at yesterday and I can assure you it looked nothing like it does today. Uh, you can see the tattered sails, the sailboats uh, kind of smashed together here at the what remains of the floating docks here. The powerful winds that drove this board straight into our building and hit our electrical panel and damaged it severely. And the front of Daphne High School, you can see the whole front has just been pulled right out. You see the pier, by the way, still standing. and the community center over to the right is still up and rolling as well. Now this is right at the Dog River, just before you hit the big mm -hmm. bridge there. And these are the uh, Bayside condos mm -hmm. there. Uh, a lot of roof damage. Uh, the winds from this thing just peeled back the corners. Ivan's path of destruction stretched about half the length of the Gulf Coast, from the Florida Panhandle through Alabama, Mississippi, and into the Louisiana bayous. We're on Main Street in Atmore, you can see those hurricane force winds suck the window right out of the front of this store. We know Dauphin Island is without power. We don't know uh, the level of damage there as of yet. Wow, they took a, a very serious hit. From Gulf Shores, we can see pictures of apartment buildings, condos that look as if they simply crumbled. I don't see any of these buildings in Gulf Shore that don't show some signs of damage. We can see that a lot of the beach is simply gone. The American Red Cross um, is spreading out across uh, the region. The National Guard is here with more than 2,000 soldiers, for which I am so appreciative. FEMA is already in place. Uh, last night, we started seeing power trucks coming in under the Loxley area. Uh, that water, we can tell you this morning, has receded almost to the SOS Oyster Bar, Fort Morgan Road. We are hearing that it is passable in some areas if you have four-wheel drive or a truck. We're probably in for some uh, dreadfully tragic pictures. Uh... We got hit. We got hit in the face and we got hit hard. Some people chose to ride out the storm in this neighborhood, as many as a dozen people could have perished at the, oh, because of Hurricane Ivan. Powers are down. We had to snake our way through some areas on Cotton Bayou Drive, and that's one of the reasons that it is not back open. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. They're here for a single bag of ice and three water jugs, and many have been here. When, you, when your electricity is out, it's kind of hard uh, keeping your food cold, having something cold to drink. Friday, September 17th the day after Ivan.
Helicopter views of old Fort Pickens show leftover surge at Gulf Islands National Seashore. The approach roads to the I-10 bridge over Escambia Bay, Florida are scoured. Low bridge spans are pushed northward off their piles from battering waves on top of storm surge. The upper portions of the bridge remain. There's no area that was untouched by this storm. Westward travel along the Baldwin County coastline shows the result of the dual forces of wind from the hurricane and likely from downbursts and tornadoes, along with storm surge. Dozens and dozens of condos, apartments, and homes demolished. Lake Shelby is breached. Fresh water flows into the salty Gulf. The pier at Gulf State Park is in pieces. By 4 o'clock this afternoon, more than 700,000 of Alabama Power's 1.3 million customers were without power. Hurricane Ivan's effects aren't just being felt where the storm hit. Consumers across the country have to shell out more money at the grocery store and the gas pump because of production halts and delivery delays caused by the storm. DOT is moving on this stuff, but all the bridges still remain closed. Even the Garson Point Bridge remains closed. Eight confirmed at this point. In Escambia County alone, and that's the, the number of fatalities. Search and rescue efforts are continuing over on the barrier islands. Some houses are completely gone. Others sit in the neighbor's yard. The houses down on the west end are, are sort of just like matchsticks. I didn't expect it to be this bad. Uh, as we approached Bruton and started seeing the devastation, it was, it was just quite uh, intense. And today is the first day we've had to get gas since the storm, but we've loaded for an hour and 45 minutes, I think, for gas. All right, all right. Come on with it. Don't be scared of it. Snakes and alligators and creepy crawlies that have been misplaced as well. President Bush landed on Air Force One here at the Pensacola Naval Air Station. He was greeted by the two governors of Alabama and Florida. Uh, the expressions on his face kind of uh, tell you the whole story of this May of what has happened here following Hurricane Ivan. Well, Senator Jeff Sessions and Congressman Joe Bonner on the Alabama side. The beach deserted. You can still hear the fire alarms going off in the background. Three or four days out from the hurricane. After Ivan, it would take weeks, months, and years to put lives, homes, and communities back in order. When we come back, we'll look at some of the lessons from Hurricane Ivan's impact on the Gulf Coast. Many of Hurricane Ivan's lessons are pretty obvious. Hurricanes are huge storms. They have tremendous impact, and the initial impact is on the coast, at the beaches. But that's not the only place that feels the storm. Inland communities also face flooding, tornadoes, and wind. In Atmore, long lines formed for disaster relief. Damage may have been less extensive in cities like Monroeville, Grove Hill, Bay Manette, and Bruton, but it was substantial, and it was real to the families who live there. While lives were lost in storm surge at the coast, there were near tragedies elsewhere, like in Daphne. Bobby Chandler and her husband are true survivors. They decided to ride out Ivan, a decision that almost took their lives. Were they scared? Oh, God, yes. We were terrified. The couple was in their living room when a massive oak tree crashed through their roof, tearing huge holes into the ceiling of every room except the bathroom, the place they ran to to stay alive. And I spent seven hours <laughs> laying right here. That's 20 years of my life. God. Boop. God. I was in shock. I saw total devastation of a house, undoubtedly the worst case in Daphne. For many Ivan survivors, insurance along with federal and state dollars enabled recovery, but on an individual level, much of it was churches, charities, and the kindness of strangers. 
For weeks after Ivan, steps were made every day in the recovery effort, and along the way, small miracles. Unbelievable the people have turned out just to help. Unloading trucks, uh, unloading people in and out. They're coming from all over, Grove Hill and everywhere else. Over Dallas, Texas, Indianapolis, Indiana, Chicago. As in other past hurricanes, the recovery was not so smooth or swift for all people, even seven months later, especially in northwest Florida. We basically living like camping out here now till we get a house built back. Ten years after Ivan, our coastal communities have learned the lesson of better building codes. New construction has higher standards for wind and literally higher elevation in flood zones. Compromised bridges were rebuilt higher. The importance of beach vegetation and sand renourishment is understood. Drainage improvement lessens water damage and speeds up recovery. A solid infrastructure is vital, but that takes dollars. Communities have learned that putting utility lines underground diminishes the impact of the next storm. Emergency managers have more comprehensive mitigation and evacuation plans, including reverse 911 calling. There are more people on our coast, and many have never seen a storm like Ivan. For them, and for all of us, Ivan taught us that personal responsibility and the family action plan is a must. Since Hurricane Ivan, we have more technology to show us hurricanes a little more clearly, but not perfectly. Smartphones and weather apps with alerts give you more data than ever before. Social media should help communicate critical information, but it may also pass on misinformation. None of this will stop a tree from falling in the wind of a storm. Hurricane Ivan set a benchmark that one day will be broken. That's why we prepare this hurricane season and every hurricane season for the next storm. I'm Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.